Hey, what's happening, YouTube? What's going on, guys? I just got my morning coffee. Got a little bit of time to kill. Figure we would knock out a video. I saw an interesting article in the Chicago Tribune titled Backaching Work, Low Pay, No Health Care. Here's why Chicago restaurant workers aren't coming back. In uh, recent weeks and months, we've been talking a lot about the national labor shortage going on. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if once the enhanced unemployment benefits start running out in September, if people start returning to work. But even if people do start returning to work, it looks like a lot of people don't want to return to the hospitality industry. Now, the hospitality industry encompasses everything from what hotel workers, hotel managers, casino workers, casino dealers, um, amusement park workers, and of course, you know, fast food and restaurants. Uh, I talked about in a video the other day when I was heading out to Indiana to go to the beach at the dunes, uh, I saw a billboard that one of the casinos out in Northwest Indiana was paying a $2,500 signing bonus uh, to casino dealers. And I think it was a $500 signing bonus to really any workers. So, you know, cashiers, people who work in the restaurants in the casino and everything else. People are having a hard time attracting employees. We've talked about uh, what Burger King employees walked out, dollar store employees walked out. Uh, Taco Bells uh, across the country are either only staying open from 9 to 6 or being closed all day and opening up at 6 in the evening. And even if workers do wind up returning to the workplace in September when unemployment runs out, uh, we've been seeing a number of surveys that show that up to half of hospitality workers don't plan on returning to the hospitality industry. And that number is even higher in the restaurant industry. You know, when I was younger, I used to, I actually used to want to be a chef. I really like cooking and grilling and uh, preparing food and all that type of stuff. I like playing around with different recipes. But one thing that kind of always turned me off to being a chef was I realized that, you know, if you become a chef, you're going to be working nights and you're going to be working weekends. And uh, I, I didn't want to do that. So I, I didn't wind up going into that career field. I had a couple of buddies who did. I think you either love the restaurant industry or you hate the restaurant industry, right? The restaurant industry has a, a certain culture. Obviously, people are working nights and weekends. Uh, people work late into the evening. And uh, for any of you guys who are ever fans of Anthony Bourdain or No Reservations, uh, you kind of see that culture of the restaurant industry, right? Like, you know, everybody who works in the kitchen goes out after work. You know, they get off work late, 12 o'clock, 1 in the morning, go out for drinks. You're just living, you know, it's more of a lifestyle than it is a job. And people either like it or hate it. It's it's a, a fast place, uh, fast paced place to work. Um, and it's not an easy job, right? It, it's tough on your body. You're on your feet all day. You're burning your hands. You're working with your hands. Uh, it's an exhausting, tough job, and uh, I think the uh, the lockdowns of the past year, people having a chance to step away from the restaurant industry, uh, it really kind of separated who really wants to be in that industry, and I think a lot of people realize that they don't want to be in that industry, so uh, even as things start opening back up, even as people start going back to work, it seems like well over half of restaurant workers don't want to go back into the restaurant industry. They're going into other industries. Uh, I think in this article, they talk about one restaurant worker who got a job at a grocery store. You know, it, it's still not the best hours, but he's out at nine o'clock at night instead of out at one o'clock in the morning. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of restaurant workers are going to be going into other fields, whether it be, you know, working at Trader Joe's, working at Costco, uh, getting a job in a call center. It seems like people don't want to head back to the restaurant industry. And it'll be interesting to see what uh, what restaurants and the dining experience looks like going into the fall here. Again, this one comes to us from the Chicago Tribune, and it's titled Back Aching Work, Low Pay, No Health Care. Here's why Chicago restaurant workers aren't coming back. Emilio Enriquez has climbed the climbed from busser to line cook during his seven years working in restaurants, and he still dreams of becoming a chef. But he hasn't worked during the COVID-19 pandemic and won't look for a job until fall. Once unemployment benefits no longer pay more than he would likely earn working, and he hopes more people are vaccinated. This is what I want to do in the long haul, said Enriquez 25. I'm just not ready to do that just yet, especially since I'm making more money at home. And here's what's interesting. Here we have a guy who is passionate about the restaurant industry, wants to become a chef, wants to work in this industry, but even he isn't going to work, right? Like right now, it's an easy time to get a job, especially in restaurants. And will a lot of people get upset with quote unquote lazy workers for staying at home when the government is shelling out billions and even trillions of dollars to their cronies and friends? Uh, who can blame, blame the little guy when they can make $52,000 a year sitting at home doing nothing uh, as opposed to working? So uh, well, it's not really good for society as a whole. I can't really blame this guy for taking that government cheese uh, because everybody else is getting the money as well, right? 
Cody Roberts has worked as a restaurant server for 10 years until the pandemic. Unlike Enriquez, she has no plans to return. So this person has no plans to return to the industry. It hit me pretty quickly, Robert said. My body started bouncing back. My back stopped hurting. My nails started growing because I wasn't dipping them into buckets of bleach and sanitizer all the time. I felt like a person who could move through the world relatively well again. And, you know, I worked in restaurants a lot, uh, you know, when I was younger, as a teenager, in college, and even into my 20s. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a love-hate thing. There were, uh, there were a lot of fun times. It, it's kind of a fun lifestyle. It's a little bit different. It's fast-paced. You work with cool people. Uh, but at the same time, the hours suck. It's no fun working nights and weekends, and it's a tough job. As society inches, inches towards normal and diners fill tables and booths once again, a question has hovered over the restaurant industry. Where are the workers? From white tablecloth destinations to casual neighborhood spots, business owners have decried a labor shortage that has led some restaurants to scale back menus and hours. Some need servers and bartenders. Others need dishwashers and cooks and some need all of the above. A simple narrative has taken root. The workers are staying home to collect unemployment, especially as long as the federal government offers a $300 weekly surplus through, the, through Labor Day due to the pandemic. At least 24 states have pulled out of the bonus payments in recent weeks, usually with Republican legislators saying it will force people back into the workforce. But Enriquez and Roberts underscore reality, no single answer explains the restaurant industry's thinning labor force, nor can we predict when or whether it will return. This fall, Roberts will start a master's program that would, would have probably been another two to five years down the road if coronavirus-driven circumstances hadn't yanked her from the only industry she'd ever known. The pandemic, she said, made her realize she was ready to go. Roberts called leaving the industry bittersweet. And, uh, you know, I, th I think most people do have a love-hate uh, relationship with the restaurant industry. Another kind of interesting thing about that, uh, that previous quote, the, uh, the lockdowns, the pandemic, uh, you know, the time away from work caused a lot of people to rethink their life priorities, uh, rethink their careers, and uh, there's an example of that. It's obviously more expensive for me to go back to school, she said. It's a more difficult option, but I think I'm worth it, and I don't think restaurants make employees think that they're worth it. And that is one of the tough things about the restaurant industry, right? Like the, the pay isn't always the best, but beyond that, uh, a lot of times it's hard to get full-time employment. Uh, when I worked in restaurants, a lot of the employees working in restaurants wound up having two or three jobs, right? Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, they'd work at this place. Fridays and Saturdays, they'd work at this place. Or they'd work from 9 to 4 at one restaurant and then head over to another restaurant for, uh, for the night shift. Uh, a lot of times it doesn't come with health insurance. You don't get paid time off. Uh, it's just not, uh, not an ideal working environment. Roberts ticked off a list of complaints from her years as a server, unreliable pay, lack of health care, terminal exhaustion, and too many negative interactions with customers. You come into a restaurant and you'd think I'm happy to see you, but I depend on you because that's how I make my money. It's not my hourly wage, she said. Battling an employer over health care and scheduling during the early days of the pandemic pushed her over the edge. I was tired and I was unhappy, and I knew a lot of people I worked with were also tired and unhappy. You can only go so long with going unheard and think it's feasible to keep doing it, she said. There's a lot of money to be made in the service industry, and I think it speaks volumes that workers are deciding not to go back. Restaurant owners and their advocates say the reduced labor force is crippling after a year of industry devastation. Many acknowledge the issues aren't as simple as a surplus of unemployment payments. A lot of people want to say it's just the enhanced unemployment, and yeah, that's part of it, but if I had to rank it, closed schools, lack of child care options are the biggest issues, said Sam Toya, president of the Illinois Restaurant Association. Many workers have likely moved on, he said. There's no question people working in the, in the industry have gone into other fields. Cannabis distribution centers, oh, cannabis distribution centers like Amazon and UPS, delivery services, Toya said. We definitely have lost a lot of folks. And that is true, right? A lot of restaurants were... Uh, if not entirely closed, working at limited capacity for months, if not even a year. So if you were a restaurant worker, you got two choices, either sit on unemployment or go get another job in another field. And if you've been working for the last six months, eight months in another field, you have benefits, the pay is equal or better, and uh, you're not working nights, weekends, and holidays, I can see how a lot of people would opt not to go back. Several restaurant owners express pessimism that the labor shortage will resolve anytime soon. Michael Muser, an owner of Ever, which was awarded two Michelin stars in April, is struggling to find servers who are always available in a pipeline of fine dining industry talent. And, you know, I used to have a couple of buddies who you worked in, you know, high-end steakhouses and things like that. And on a Friday or Saturday night, it wasn't at all uncommon for them to walk out with 
$500, $600 a night in tips. And uh, so that's actually very telling that people don't even want to return for that type of money. Uh, if you're somebody who's always wanted to get into fine dining, but kind of had a hard time getting your foot in the door, uh, maybe now is an, uh, an opportunity to do that because there is some, uh, some good money uh, if you are a server at a fine dining establishment. Um, let's see, so I think we covered that. Uh, these are hireable people in many other fields, Muser said. My concern is they're gone, they're gone. I don't think there's a small army of hospitality workers waiting for some green light to come back. Michael Roper, the owner of Hope Leaf, said he employs 25 fewer employees than when the pandemic struck and needs 12 to 15 more employees to make it possible to serve our full menu. Instead, he had to pare back his menu and hours, but he doesn't blame the workers who haven't returned. Hours are late and there are sharp knives and boiling hot oil and slippery floors, he said. I saw one of our old cooks stocking produce at a grocery store. He doesn't want to come back. He's making the same money and done with work at 9 every night as opposed to midnight or 1 in the morning. Before the pandemic, Roper said there was often a farm team coming up of new workers, including multiple people from some family staffing the kitchen. Uh, most of those people were immigrants, he said, and there are no obvious replacements. It's not as if some loyal student, student is going to say, oh my God, there's a dishwashing job at Hope Leaf, he said. <laughs> uh, the biggest fix, Roper said, would be a rational immigration policy that welcomes people who do much of the hard labor in the United States. Toya also championed immigration reform to boost the service industry, including immigration work visa program endorsed by the National Restaurant Association. You know, it's one thing that's just kind of interesting, total kind of side note here, but uh, I was watching some show on Vice the other day, and... Uh, I forget what the show was about. I think it was about some small town down in uh, the southeast or something like that. But uh, it was all illegal immigrants or all immigrants who were working in uh, like the chicken factories, right? They have to run around in this dusty like chicken shit filled burn and they have to, you know, grab all these roosters and chop their heads off. And it's a gross, nasty job. Um, and I think they had like 100 people, you know, with, with uh, people not coming into the country as much anymore. Uh, they were short on workers. They, they were kind of getting some, you know, uh, natural born American citizen workers uh, to work there. And I think out of like 100 employees, one of them lasted more, longer than like 30 days or 60 days. Uh, I think it's funny how like countries like India have a, a quote unquote caste system and we kind of look down on them for that. Uh, and, and really, I don't think we should have caste systems. But uh, when you look at it, at least they're upfront with their system. Uh, here in the U.S., we're like, hey, let's bring in some more brown people to uh to do this horrible work that nobody wants to do for shit wages because no Americans want to do them. So we have our very own uh, caste system and treat a certain segment of the population here very poorly uh, as long as it makes the rest of our lives easier. We just don't really want to acknowledge that. Uh, immigrants have always been the backbone of the hospitality industry, especially in Chicago during the last hundred years, he said. Workers, meanwhile, say there are deeply seated issues within the industry that predate the pandemic. Last week, the nonprofit group Fair Wage, which advocates for ending the minimum wage for restaurant workers, issued a report with the Food Labor Research Center and the University of California at Berkeley, claiming a massive exodus of workers from restaurants. In a survey of 144 Illinois restaurant workers who applied for the One Fair Wage Emergency Fund last fall, 53% said they have considered leaving the industry during the pandemic, the report said. Reasons cited include, included low wages, 75%. Concerns about COVID-19, 44%, hostility or harassment from customers, 35%, or from coworkers and managers, 27%. Nataki Rhodes, lead organizer for One Fair Wage in Illinois, said the pandemic has revealed the very inequities and injustices tipped workers receive in the industry. Many workers want to go back, but how can they go back to an industry that doesn't want to pay them and invest in their future, she said. This pandemic has showed restaurant owners are worried about how they're going to open up, not how to invest in their workers. Multiple workers interviewed said the industry is rife with systematic challenges that were long worth the trade-off since the pandemic. That hasn't been the case. A lot of people go into it for the flexibility, the money, the camaraderie, and the action. Uh, and I think that's why a lot of people do love the uh, love the restaurant industry, the, the camaraderie and the fast-paced environment. Uh, you know, when you're working in a kitchen, you can swear at people, you can yell at people, you can do things uh, that you would never be able to do in an office. Uh, but he said most of those things are gone and not coming back, said Don Wolf, an off and on server and bartender since the late 80s, who worked his last shift March 2020 and does not plan to return. He wants to put his master's degree in German journalism to work in some form of writing, research, or communications instead. There's a cloud hanging over the industry, and General Wolf said it's not the place it used to be. For Enriquez, the issues keeping him away are twofold, health and money, 
So far, health concerns, he said, ping-ponging government regulations and reopening restaurants seemed to have driven seemed it driven by restaurant owners and their advocates rather than a concern for workers. It felt like restrictions were based on arbitrary numbers, based on what lobbyists and the mayor wanted. Um, you know, uh, here's one thing that I think is kind of silly. Chicago had Lollapalooza. They had over 100,000 people shoulder to shoulder the other day. So you can't, uh, you, you can't say, oh my gosh, we should close down restaurants or something like that. And at the same time, have a music festival with 100,000 people shoulder to shoulder uh, doing drugs and drinking beer and licking each other's faces. Uh, he pointed to a University of California at San Francisco study released in January that concluded cooks saw the largest spike in COVID-19 deaths between March and October of 2020 of California workers between ages 18 and 65 years old. That's interesting. Uh, more than like healthcare workers and retail workers. Uh, crossed with subpar wages and spotty access to healthcare, Enriquez has, ha has had insurance at just one restaurant job. He isn't eager to return to a restaurant kitchen. He's vaccinated, but worried about spreading the virus. I'm, I'm still not convinced it's worth the risk, he said. The extra $300 a week in benefits empowers him to make that calculation. It boosts his pay to about the same as what he would earn in restaurants, about $700 a week after taxes, he said. The narrative of workers being paid too much in unemployment is looking at the wrong problem, he said. The reality is we're not being paid enough to work, Enriquez said. We're not getting enough money and we're not getting enough health care. The expiration of the $300 surplus will send him back into the kitchens, which is where he wants to be. He'll likely have his pick of jobs. A culture of transparency needs to be there, Enriquez said. What did they do for workers during the pandemic? Did they force them back or did they do what they could do to protect them? He also wants a restaurant free of sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is rampant in the restaurant industry, he said. A living wage and ideally health care. Man, man, this is a long article. Matthew DeMare, 37, who has worked in a series of high-end bars since leaving his corporate job in 2008, has weaved in and out of the industry during the pandemic. In April, he took a job managing a bar at the Walden, a private event venue in West Town, specializing in weddings. The change could have happened regardless, he said, but the past year in the service industry made him realize he'd had enough. I was emotionally and mentally overworking in a restaurant, he said. Once the shutdown happened, we were forced to reevaluate and assess our priorities and recalibrate our lives, and a lot of us got used to living a more normal schedule and a healthier lifestyle that isn't really possible in the restaurant or bar industry. He thinks a labor force will slowly reemerge, but with higher standards. There are still a lot of good people out there who want to work in the industry, but a lot of people won't take jobs that are garbage anymore. Like Roberts, Beth Martini, 36, is leaving the industry to attend school in fall. She has worked in restaurants since the age of 15 and worked her way through fine dining establishments during the last seven years, eventually receiving a level one certification from the master some, I can never say that word, sommeliers. Uh, after her last employer Michelin starred in Tente closed in March of 2020, she said she stopped having panic attacks, her back stopped hurting, she was drinking less, and she was sleeping better. The only thing that changed was I wasn't working in a restaurant, she said. Meanwhile, her boyfriend, also a longtime restaurant worker, was called back to his job last summer, where she said management violated COVID-19 seating restrictions. They both realized they were ready to move on. In the fall, Martini will enroll at the University of Illinois at Chicago for a bachelor's degree in design. Her boyfriend, her boyfriend will enroll at the Illinois Institute of Technology to study aerospace engineering. I feel like I got a fresh start, start a fresh shot at doing stuff differently. She feels twinges of regret about leaving the industry. She and her boyfriend saw a long-term future before the pandemic. We were going to open a bar together and it was going to be amazing. We had the menu concept and everything, Martini said, and then the industry collapsed and we're doing other things. So that's the end of that article. Uh, that was a long one. Thanks for everybody who hung around for it. As always, would love to hear your thoughts on this and other issues. So go ahead and drop a comment down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, and we'll catch you on the next video.